Let's jump over here, guys. I want to show you this chart of Bitcoin here. So again, what we see here, this is the current Bitcoin chart. And what we can clearly see is we were in the channel that I was talking about. And I, I went on a million interviews, right? And I said, all right, guys, we have this 31 to 30,000 range. That's your range. If you can break out and confirm, you have a move up to 35, 36, maybe even 45. If you break below, you're headed down. And look at what we got. Down move time count and starting to break down we're trading at 28,500 or so the target here remains this trend line take a look here if i zoom out on the chart i want to show you guys this so if we zoom out on the chart you can see there's a very clear trend line which is around 27 to 27 3 at this point in time so that's your short-term target now if that breaks like i've said that's where real trouble starts this in here doesn't really matter frankly doesn't really matter it's if this line breaks, if this line breaks lower, below here, that that's where I would start to get concerned. A lot of people have been talking about how Bitcoin is rocketing, it's doing its amazing, amazing price action. But I have something to show you guys, and I think this makes it very, very clear. Now, you know I've been a skeptic on Bitcoin. I said 31,000 30, 31, to 30,000 high would be major resistance. Well, we already know that Bitcoin's pulling back off of that today, down trading around 28,800. But I want to show you this, all right? This is my thesis for why I think Bitcoin's going to go down from here, okay? And again, I understand no one wants to hear it. If you're a bull on Bitcoin, this is not what you want to hear. But to be honest, sometimes the truth hurts, and that's okay. Or at the very least, I want you guys to take this information and at least store it in your brains and then make a different decision. But look at both sides. What drives me about, drives me nuts about Bitcoin and crypto kind of nut jobs out there, the, the, the super uber bullish people, is that they're not willing to look at both sides. All right, so again, when we were at 69,000 and I said, guys, charts are telling us we're going to 20. No, going to 100,000 by the end of November. How did that work out, right? You didn't look at both sides. So one of the things I want to show you here, this is the chart of Bitcoin, okay? Bitcoin here, this is the weekly, which is where Bitcoin is. This is the chart of the NASDAQ. And I want to show you this. So my thesis for why Bitcoin can go lower is very simple. If the NASDAQ corrects after doing a massive move up, how much will Bitcoin fall in response? Okay, well, let's do a quick trend line here. Let's do this right off the bat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a trend tool and we're gonna measure how far off of the all-time highs we are. Bitcoin right now, folks, is a monstrous, basically has to go up 134%, 135% to get back to the all-time highs of 69,000. Now, if we take this for the NASDAQ and we say, okay, how much does the NASDAQ have to go up? The NASDAQ has to basically go up, you know, 7%, 7% or so to get back to the high. So look at the difference here. This is what rally you've gotten in Bitcoin, and this is what rally you've gotten in the NASDAQ. Now, let's just do a hypothetical. Let's talk about what if the NASDAQ just corrects back to 12,000 from 14.3, which would be a retrace of this move around 50%, maybe 6.18 Fibonacci retrace. Where do you think Bitcoin goes if that kind of correction? So if you move all the way down here, all right, so basically you'll raise half to two thirds of the gains in the NASDAQ, which by the way, would not be unusual. Where is Bitcoin gonna go? And I would guarantee, almost guarantee, there's nothing that's a guarantee, you are likely headed back to 15,700. Now let's take it a step further. Imagine if the NASDAQ goes even lower, right? So what if the NASDAQ takes out the October lows? Do you think that Bitcoin's only gonna go back to the, those lows? Panic will set in, humans are made to be emotional, and likely you're headed a lot lower on Bitcoin. So again, that is the bear case at this point. There's no other bear case. Bitcoin is not a not a security. The Fed has said that. Uh, in fact, we just heard that Coinbase said that the SEC said, hey guys, we want you to stop trading before they file the lawsuit. We want you to stop trading everything but Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's in the clear. The only negative now is a credit event or a liquidity event in the markets, a recession that causes stocks to collapse, and in this situation, you very well could see. Now you could say, okay, well, Bitcoin, maybe it doesn't go down when stocks are collapsing because it's a store of safety. I would agree with you if that's been the history of Bitcoin. But as of now, it's not. And remember, even when the COVID crash happened back in March of 2020, you know what happened? We still saw gold even selling off initially. Gold, Bitcoin, stocks, 
they all fell together because there was panic. So you have to remember, be realistic on it. All right. The bullish momentum that propelled Bitcoin to a 75% year-to-date gain all but vanished on August 1st as Bitcoin price closed out the month of July down 5.4%. Bitcoin price briefly fell below $29,000 on July 31st and remains under that key resistance level. The contraction in Bitcoin price has some analysts cautioning that BTC risks dipping to $25,000. While Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell did not make definitive statements regarding the September 20th interest rate decision, the market seems to confidently believe that the Fed will pause interest rate increases again. CME's FedWatch tool shows the overwhelming market belief that such increases are coming at the next FOMC. As of August 1st, the probability of an interest rate pause sits at 81.5%. Since July 31st, over $20 million in Bitcoin longs were liquidated. When BTC longs are liquidated without buy pressure from trading volume, Bitcoin price is negatively affected. Bitcoin volume has hit the lowest level since early 2021. The absence of new volume has sent the Fear and Greed Index, a key investor sentiment gauge, into a downslide since the start of July. Despite starting July with a greed sentiment, the index now shows neutral market feelings. The short-term uncertainty in the crypto market does not appear to have changed institutional investors' long-term outlook. Recently, despite a hostile U.S. regulatory environment, large institutions are pushing for Bitcoin financial instruments which may spark a bull run. Grayscale directly urged the SEC to approve all Bitcoin ETFs. Bitcoin price continues to be directly impacted by macroeconomic events, and it is also likely that further regulatory actions and interest rate hikes will continue having some effect on BTC price. It's no surprise that we're seeing Bitcoin in somewhat of a slump given that it's the dog days of summer. Volumes are down. Retail traders aren't coming into the crypto markets more generally. The macro backdrop clearly is playing a role here, with interest rates relatively high. But I should note that we're in a part of the four-year cycle in which this kind of lack of interest isn't all that surprising. We're out of the blow-up phase and clearly in the boredom phase. In the long term, market participants still expect the price of Bitcoin to recover, especially as more financial institutions are seemingly embracing BTC. Take a look at this. This is median, median sales price of homes sold versus median, median income. And look at this, guys. This is what, to be honest, there's so much consensus now that it's going to be a soft landing. We know that Jerome Powell just last week said, hey guys, we're not predicting a recession. I showed you in one of these game plans where Jerome, where, where Bren Bernanke back in 08 said, hey, we're not going to have a recession and look what happened. The same thing occurs. This is human psychology 101. People believe there's panic. And in fact, my stream, The No Shill Zone, which I do Mondays at 11 a.m. with Ben Cowan, we, he showed a chart that showed searches for the term recession and there's always an initial search for a recession which pops it and then as the recession doesn't come immediately because data is lagging and fed hikes are lagging searches come down and then when the recession hits it pops again but my point is this on this chart even in 08 all right the median sales price of homes to real median household income was only at 400 percent look at where we are right now and the reason i say that i mean this is this is like insane this is all-time highs the amount that the, the whole price to what people are actually making this is nuts and if you think that this is not going to end badly somehow magically that everything will be fine good for you i hope you live in this bubble and i hope you're successful i like to know the real stats all right let's go to this one all right this is what i showed yesterday guys you add that, and then you add the amount of money that the government is going, by the way, that's our tax dollars, that are going to be paid in interest, almost a trillion dollars a year. I said it yesterday, I'll say it again. This is more money than even our biggest budget allocator, which is the military. And that is incredible. Let's go to this one, guys. This was a powerful one. Take a look at this. Corporate bond yield versus Fed funds rate. And this is what scares me as well about the market. If we look down here, we can see that every time all right, average corporate bond yield minus Fed funds rate. So it's the average corporate bond minus the Fed funds rate. Every time you get this, this average corporate bond yield minus Fed funds rate to hit these levels, what happens? Look at this. Here, 
was a top in the market. So this is the market. Dude. The white line is the S&P. The red line is U.S. average corporate bonds yields minus Fed funds rate. And every time here was a top. Here, oh, yeah. top before the market collapsed. Here was just before COVID market collapsed. Look at where we are right down here. What do you think is going to happen up here, folks? All right. And again, I could show you a million different different pictures and charts that are going to showcase this, but I think this again speaks for itself. We talked about this one already. Um, I do want to just show you guys. Yesterday, I showed you this, and the reason why I keep showing you these, whether it's housing data or retail data, or in this case, average monthly payments of new cars, it's because you have to understand the consumers had to deal with lots of inflation, food and energy, and when you throw that on top of home prices, on to top of, of monthly car payments that are getting close to average seven hundred and fifty dollars. These aren't things that people can really live without. There's a lot of places, and I know if you're in Europe and you, if you're in different areas, you're like, oh, well, you can take mass transit. In a lot of the US, you don't have that luxury. You have to have a car. Now, you don't have to buy the most expensive car, but 